What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. So a guy like Dobbins who didn't test, is that is that a big red flag for you? Are you upset about that? Is that, what, what do you, how do you play something like that? Like one of the elite guys or you just, it was injury, so you're, you're good. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not really concerned about it. I mean, I, I know what he brings to the table as an athlete, you know, as a player. Uh, he, he's really versatile. He's super physically gifted. Um, but I think the only thing it does for me is gives me kind of pause on what's going on with that ankle sprain. Um, does he have to get the tight rope, the tight rope proce- procedure down in the ankle um, to secure some lo- to secure the tendons and ligaments? I mean, and that's the one thing that we don't know. Um, how don't much would that? Table. How much would that scare you if he did have to have something like that? Not in t- I mean, it wouldn't push him back any for me, but I mean, I think it'd be something that would be good to know um, and to see how kind of far along he is. And it'd be great to see, it would have been great to see him at a pro day, at least do something in that capacity. It sucks that we're not going to get to see him out there and see how in, he's moving in some capacity, like you um, said. Yeah. And just to see how he's moving, not how he tests. I mean, a lot of times we get caught up in the numbers and numbers and numbers. But I would rather have a guy who's super smooth and fluid who runs a four five five, and a guy who's just just <laughs> veins popping out of his neck, who's you know he's running four four something. You know what right. I mean? So it's it yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Um, but guys like Dobbins, I like a lot because I think he has a true three down skill set. Um, I think he's similar to Aaron Jones in the way he will be used at the NFL level. A uh, good blend of runner receiver. He could be a really a efficient running back at the NFL level. Um, but I'm intrigued to see where he's, where he'll get drafted. I think with some of the movement now with free agency with Melvin Gordon and Todd Gurley, Drink. Um, we don't really know much about where those guys are going. I've heard Atlanta, Miami. Yeah. A lot of um, Miami talk for Dobbins. They said they're smitten with him, but you know, you, we were talking off air before we started and how Ryan Pace never, never drafts the guy they interview or talk about. So maybe, maybe the dolphins are pulling some Ryan pace antics, but maybe I, I wouldn't don't know, be upset about I, that. If he ended up in Miami, it wouldn't be bad. Actually. You know, I, th- I think he'd be a, gr- you know, a, a great Robin to Jordan Howard's Batman to start his career. I think, I think that's think perfect. Be, yeah. I think that'd be great for him to kind of learn and grow. Um, I don't like their ecosystem at all though. It's like their offensive line was, bottom oh, yeah. it was terrible. So it's, it's, yeah, that, that's not a great, a great place to be as a rookie. But I think as a pass catcher, he provides immediate value because that's a, that's a skill set that Jordan Howard hasn't proven that he has. Well, let's, uh, let's get back to Dobbins. Um, tell us some of the things that, that uh, like maybe some of his best attributes, like what are you, what are your favorite things about uh, JK Dobbins and do those greatly outweigh like the negatives? That's a, that's a great question. I mean, the first thing we look at when we look at Dobbins is single step efficiency. And so what that really means is like one cut and go, right? So how fast, how quickly can a player get into acceleration um, as they're kind of moving laterally? Like imagine if he's on like an outside zone uh, play to the right and can he really plant his foot and get upfield um, and get to top end speed as quick as he can? Like that that's something that he does extremely well. Um and as you see him do that a ton of times to, to get past defenders. And he surprises he surprises backers, backers at the second level because how quick he gets there. Yeah. Um, that, that's, a, that's a really interesting trait that he has. Uh, I, like, I like his variety in short areas. Um, that's an aspect of his game that he, he's extremely adept at. He makes people miss in a phone booth like you talked about. That's a big area of what it means to be a running back at the NFL level. You have to be grit, really good and or great in a phone booth. Um, I think the last thing that kind of separates Dobbins is he's a pretty multi-dimensional receiver, right? He, he lined up outside. He lined up in the slot. Right. He was pretty efficient on angle and option routes. Yeah. Um, but I think he kind of has that three down capability and we're kind of seeing now it's interesting that the size of the running back doesn't necessarily dictate the workload. Um, with Christian McCaffrey and you know a lot of those guys who aren't as big, even you know Aaron Jones only like 205, 206 pounds. Yeah. You know, so it's um, that's really interesting one to me. And I think Dobbins can kind of be in that same mold in terms of 
um, potentially being a three down threat at the next level. But I think he definitely has a skill set to do so. Yeah, Dobbins, Dobbins, since he broke his leg, I believe, coming into uh, college. But then after that, once he got to Ohio State, he didn't miss a game. So you talked about earlier about how the, how guys take contact and how they do this, all those kind of things. And, and this is a guy who was always available, um, which I think is huge. Um, at a guy at Ohio State, a team that is typically like if you wanted to, they're kind of the Alabama almost of the Big Ten. So how much is that way in like their offensive line is typically pretty good. They always have probably the best skill position players in the Big Ten. Like is that way in on any of your input on Dobbins? Um, not really. In all honesty, I mean, just just watching the guy play. I mean, he, he he's a good back, man. I mean, there, there are some players I think that you could see that, um, I guess, kind of overshadowing how how good they are and how high a ceiling they do have um but yeah i mean off um offensively ohio state opened up a ton of holes i mean having justin fields back there i was for, about to ask you is there do you have like having justin fields back there and a running quarterback how much does that help a running back out and I, i've we've always talked about how huge that is for a running back and how it makes life so much easier um so do you take I mean, anything it, it, away from yeah. his he had the single season uh rushing a record at Ohio State with 2,003 yards this year. Um, does he get there with that without a guy like Fields at the helm? Do you do you dock him anything for this season because it was so good? And did Fields help that really expand into what it is? Were you worried if he doesn't have a running quarterback that he's not as good as he had shown? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you can dock him for it, but it's, it's definitely, you know, when they run zone read, it's J- Justin Fields' is a legitimate threat. Yeah. So it's, if you watch them run zone read, it's really interesting because – Justin Fields opened up a lot of lanes for their backs. Mm-hmm. And people need to kind of realize, like like I said before, and you can drink to this too, your ecosystem <laughs> is extremely important and the running backs can't control. You can't control what your offensive coordinator is calling, you know, the type of scheme you run, that type of thing. So the environment they're in is, is important and vital to their overall success. But – it's all it's all part of their opportunity. They get the opportunity to play. What do they do with it? Yeah, do they capitalize and and J.K. Dobbins definitely capitalized this past year, and which is why a lot of people have him as a top three back in this class. Is there an is there an ideal scheme fit for him at the next level? Like I know they did, um, they kind of they did a lot of different. Like when they I was reading a bunch of stuff, and when when they call plays, like they do a lot of different variations. Like they have all sorts of different blocking schemes, but it seems like they lived on a lot of zone comp sets mid zones and outside zones and all that kind of stuff is there does he fit best in a zone concept offense or a gap scheme offense or is it does it really matter i think he showed some versatility in the way that ryan day calls his plays but uh right. they had a lot of two tight ends and he was saying you know they ohio state d- kind of gets s- talked about as not being like a power run game and he was like they might not necessarily be iso and the fullbacks taking the middle linebacker out but you know we we are a we pride ourselves in being more powerful than, than the, than the opponent. Um, so is there a scheme that he, you think he best fits in at the next level or? Yeah, I, th- I think you said it best. I mean, he's, he's probably best in his own scheme. Does, um, it, does he little, need to go to a scheme like that though? Can he? Do, like, um, do you think he needs to? Needs to? I don't know. It, it, de- it depends on how good the offensive line is that he goes to. If, if they do run a primarily a power gap, like a power gap scheme. So, um, it, it that really depends, you know. If they go to a team like Miami, it's vastly different than going to a team like Philadelphia. So it, it's I, I think in I think in terms of scheme fit, I think he is better in a gap scheme because that's what he's used to. I'm mean, sorry, a zone scheme. That's what he'd be used to. He'd be he's not as well suited for a, a traditional gap scheme. Um, just, I, I don't think he has the um, how do you say it? More of the um, through contact skill set that a guy like Jonathan Taylor has, in like right. in, a, in like a power scheme, right? So, um, but I would say a scheme like we see with um, Andy Reid in Kansas City, or with you know, Peterson in Philadelphia, or even Nagy with the Bears. I'm not saying he would he should go to those places, but. Schemes similar to that in the outside zone, inside zone concepts they run, um, their RPOs and their zone reads. Um, I think he fits really well in that realm. 
All right. That's that's all great information from our guy, Angelo. We're going to take one more quick break, and then we're going to come back and, and, uh, and talk about uh, running back tiers, and we'll get into a little uh, dynasty spin on this whole thing and how Angelo likes to play his hand in rookie drafts. And if you're listening on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, little like button. If you disagree or agree with anything we've been saying, definitely hit us up with a comment below. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty and my man Angelo at Angelo underscore fantasy. Angelo's made us drink so much that I'm forced to take a break here to get another <laughs> beer. I love it. We'll be right back. Great. 